What's up, Wise Flyers? David here. Today we're talking about the Apple Card. I'm going to give a quick review of this card, the pros, cons, and then the trap that Apple has made that I do not want you to fall into. So let's just get started with this. So the main feature of this card is you get 3% back when you purchase apps, movies, or devices from Apple, 2% back when you use Apple Pay, and then 1% on everything else. There is no annual fee with this card, and they claim that there is no late fees or anything like that. If you don't pay your bill, but that is not true. I'll get more into that later on. So the Apple Card is part of the wallet app on your iPhone, so it'll track all of your expenses all in one spot. So I think the wallet app is pretty cool how it shows your expenses and what you spent it on, the exact store. But what I don't like is you can't add other cards to it, which is exactly what Apple wants. They don't want you to add other cards to their ecosystem. They just want you to spend all or put all your purchases on this Apple card and so you can see all of it in one spot. If you do have multiple cards, so I think the Mint app is a good alternative to this because you could put all of your credit cards and see all of your transactions and do your budgeting there, especially if you have multiple cards and you're going for multiple rewards and trying to get uh, maximized different categories that you spend in your life. So I'm not sure if I really trust Apple when it says it's not going to store your personal history of what you spent and where you spent it but Goldman Sachs I definitely don't trust because Goldman Sachs also has access to that information but they promise that they're not going to share that information with anybody I'm not sure the last time we were able to trust Goldman Sachs let alone any other financial institution in our country so the fact that Goldman Sachs a money-making machine at any cost has access to your information it doesn't really sit well with me. All right, so those are the key benefits of this card. Now let's talk about the trap that Apple is setting. So Apple knows that people love their brand. It's part of people's lifestyle. They don't just buy the devices from Apple, but they're part of the ecosystem and they live and breathe and eat Apple. And it's a reason why people have Apple tattoos and not Microsoft window tattoos. They know that whatever Apple puts out, people are gonna be excited for if there's a new edition people are going to ditch their old version of laptop tablet phone that just came out six months ago and they're going to buy the new one because they're all about the brand and they want more of the good stuff that Apple is offering and the Apple card is just an extension of the Apple brand going to the other areas of your life so if Apple came out with shoes you know that everybody would buy smart shoes and that could track how much of where they're walking and and the distance and fitness and all that type of stuff I'm actually surprised that Apple didn't come out with any shoes yet but that's kind of the direction that Apple is going in so I think the Apple card is more of a gimmick than a rewards earning card reason why is because there's a lot of other versions of this type of gimmick so if people love Royal Caribbean cruises Royal Caribbean card is a complete scam you don't want to go for that card the MLB cards so the Major League Baseball cards or any other sports ca credit cards they're not giving any good rewards they're just gonna show your favorite team on the card and then you just plop that down at a restaurant and show off that you are supporting your team and you're not really getting any benefit from using the card. And Apple's genius marketing with this card is perfect because it is a big clunk of metal. So anytime you use this card to pay at a restaurant or getting your macchiatos, it sounds pretty cool if you drop it on the counter by accident, everyone looks around and sees you have the Apple card, which I guess could be cool, but you're not really getting any benefit with this card. So if you're gonna get 3% back for Apple purchases, then you wouldn't really need this card anyway. So if you're going to the Apple store, you're just gonna you know, go to the store and use it there. Or most likely you're gonna make your Apple purchases online so you won't even need the card in hand. To get Apple Pay, you don't even need the card, you just need your phone for Apple Pay so you don't need to walk around with your card to get the 2% back for Apple Pay. Which leaves you for the last category of 1% everywhere else with this card, which is where Apple is setting up the biggest trap of all. If you're using the Apple card to get 1% on any purchase, then you are losing because there are so so many other better cards that you could use to get a bunch of free stuff in life or free travel than the Apple card at only 1%. So if you're new to the channel, I talk all about credit cards and travel points so you could travel anywhere almost free. And personally, I've used a ton of credit cards to get a bunch of miles and points to travel the world. I don't use credit cards to get in debt. I think I am completely against debt 
hundred percent, but I use credit cards as an extension of my bank account. So personally, I was able to take a trip around the world. I went to seven continents and just use the miles and points from credit card sign-up bonuses and only had to pay $241 in taxes. And that was just from three credit card sign-up bonuses. And from one credit card sign-up bonus, I was able to get 100,000 American airline miles and then use 62,000 American airline miles to get a one-way flight to Fiji in business class and only had to pay $5.60 in taxes. So that's an example of how to get a lot of value from credit cards rather than just 1% on every transaction and carrying around a metal card for the aesthetics of it. If you want to learn more about the type of credit cards I like to use to get a bunch of free travel around the world, stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you more about that. My biggest issue with Apple is them claiming that there are no late fees with the card. So usually with any other credit card, your bill is due, let's say on the first and if you don't pay it on the first, then there's a late fee of let's say $30, $40, and then you have to pay back the credit card still with some interest plus the late fee. What the Apple Card does is that it just charges you more interest. So even though you're not paying like a set $20, $30, $40 late fee right after your bill is due, it'll just add more interest. So either way, you're gonna pay more money even if you miss the payment. This is another genius marketing tactic of Apple to make getting this credit card seamless. So even if you are a first time credit card user with this card and you love Apple and you wanna get some Apple products, spend it on the card with money that you don't have, then it'll make it a lot easier to get in debt with this card. So the APR with this card is anywhere from 12.9 9% to 23.99% which is pretty high. In general, you never want to pay any money in interest to banks or anybody because you are losing if that's the case. You should always pay your bill in full every single month so that you never have any interest to pay because once that interest starts racking up, you're gonna be in so much debt you're gonna wish you never did. So even though this card does have a payment nudge and you don't have to pay the money now and you could delay it a little bit, please do not do that. Don't spend any money that you don't have because you will wind up in debt and it'll screw up everything else in your life. Some alternatives to this card, a really simple one would be the City Double Cash card, which gives you 2% on every purchase. It doesn't matter if it's at Apple, if it's anywhere, groceries, restaurants, getting your macchiatos, it's 2% everywhere. So if you're looking for simple cash back, that's a good card, but if you want more leverage, out of your everyday spending to get miles to travel around the world, you could click this link right over here. It's the best travel cards you can get at the moment. And if you wanna learn more about cashback credit cards or even metal credit cards, if you're going for the flex value and the aesthetics, you could click this link down here and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, we're on our way. Daddy's hanging out in his little corner.